Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 62. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI 348 chapter 8 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're still in chapter 9 doing linear programming using Excel Solver. And this is our fifth video. Here we have a finance problem. The maximum available funds for a portfolio investments is 250000 the three investment categories for this portfolio are tech sector, retail sector, and corporate bond index fund. That's not really a category. That's an exact fund they're going to invest in. The individual investments being considered Microsoft, Apple, Target, Amazon, E-Trade, corporate bond fund. Here are the expected returns. Remember, we saw how to calculate expected returns earlier in this class, but there they are. There are some constraints. The maximum amount invested in the tech sector, 125000 So half of our total investment potentially could go into the tech sector. The minimum amount to invest in the retail sector is 75000 And then there is a specific requirement. The minimum amount to invest in a particular stock target is 15000 The final constraint or requirement the minimum amount to invest in the corporate bond index fund is 20% of the amount invested in the tech sector. The goal, what is the amount that should be invested in each investment so that profits are maximized? Now, in earlier videos, we spent a lot of time translating this into our parameters, formula, inputs, decision variables, and constraints. But I've already done that here. Our decision variable will be amount invested. So I'm going to list amount invested in each one of the investments. And I can see that this is off. So watch this. I'm going to highlight this and then point to the edge with my move cursor and click and drag up. Each one of the investments, we need to determine the amount to invest in each one to maximize portfolio profit. So I'm going to call each one of the amounts x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way to x sub 5. Here are the decision variable cells. These are the cells that we will point solver to to say, hey, figure out what amount we can invest in each one of these boop, 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 to maximize returns. Here are the returns. Down here, we have our constraints. Available funds, 250,000. Max to invest in the tech sector, 125,000. Minimum in retail sector 75 and the minimum in target 15,000. And then we have two other constraints here. The minimum amount to invest in corporate bond index fund has to be 20% of the total amount invested in the tech sector. And of course, for each one of these variables, as we have done in all previous five videos, we have each amount must be non negative. That's our non negativity constraint. We don't need to enter this into our solver dialog box, but we're going to put it right here so we have our complete list of constraints. Now let's scroll down. Here's our objective function. All it is is there's the amount to invest in Microsoft. That's decision variable number one. The amount times the return for Microsoft plus each one of the other decision variables amount to invest in the investment times the expected return for each. I don't know if we're thinking ahead. That sounds like the perfect job for the sum product function. We're going to take a bunch of returns times a bunch of amounts invested, multiply, and then add. So that'll be our objective math function. And we'll do the sum product, multiply those two range for our Excel objective function. Now our constraints, here's our math formulas. The first constraint is simply please add up all of the amounts from the decision variable. The total amount for all the stocks has got to be less than the total amount we have to invest. x sub 1, x sub 2, that's the tech sector amount. There's a maximum, so we have to say tech sector amount less than or equal to 125,000. For the retail sector amount, we have a minimum of 75,000. So that amount has to be greater than or equal to 75,000. Target greater than or equal to the minimum, which is 75,000. Finally, we have the amount invested in the bond fund has to be bigger than, and there's the sum of the tech sector times 0.2.
All right, just like in earlier videos, we're going to set up our objective function and all of our constraints smartly. So I'm going to start with the objective function. Remember, we need to multiply these two and add them. That's going to be the total portfolio returns that we're going to try and maximize. So I'm using equal sum product. Array 1, I'm going to select five rows and one column, comma. The second array, five rows and one column. Expected return, amount invested, which is our decision variable. Notice that objective function is dependent on those decision variables. Similarly, our constraints will also be dependent on those decision variables. Close parentheses and control enter. So there is our objective function, and our goal is to maximize. Now let's list our constraints. We need total invested. Remember, that's x sub 1 all the way to x sub 5 and add them up. So I'm simply going to use the sum function. I want to add these close parentheses and control enter. Just as we did in earlier videos, I'm going to make sure to list my comparative operator. And then the right-hand side constraint, I'm going to say equals and click on 250,000. The idea here is we list the objective function, the operator, and the constraint visually on the spreadsheet so we can see it. We make sure everything's OK. And when we open up our solver dialog box, it'll be simple to just enter this into the dialog box. All right, now our next function, we need the total of the tech sector. So I use the sum function. Total for Microsoft and Apple, close parentheses tab. The right-hand side constraint equals 125,000. That is a maximum amount. So the operator is, hey, that amount has to be less than or equal to. Now we get to our third constraint. We need to add up the retail sector. And there's our minimum amount. Equals sum of the retail sector. That's Target and Amazon. So we add that up. Tab greater than or equal to the minimum amount equals 75,000. And Enter. Our next constraint, we need simply one cell. X3, that's the amount invested in Target tab greater than or equal to the minimum amount of 15,000, and Enter. Now, this formula right here, we have two sides we're going to have to calculate. The first one is simply the amount in E-Trade Corporate Bond Fund tab. That amount has to be greater than or equal to. And now I'm going to use equal sum to add up the tech sector close parentheses, times our formula input of 20%. Control Enter. Now we're ready to use Excel Solver. Objective function constraints. I click in the objective function cell, data, solver. All right, here we go. Set objective. There's the objective function. We definitely want to maximize by changing variable cells. That's always our decision variables. That's the amount that will be changed by this linear programming Excel solver process. Tell us exactly amount to invest in each one of the investments. Make unconstrained variables non-negative. That's our non-negativity constraint. Simplex LP, that's us telling, hey, solver, use linear programming. Now we click the Add button. We have five, one, two, three, four, five. And notice we have a bunch of functions and some right-hand side constraints, but there's different operators. So unlike last time where we just entered the functions and the constraints one time, we're going to have to be careful and enter multiple different constraints. All right, so let's click Add. And I'm going to do this one by one since each constraint is quite different. Total invested, that has to be less than or equal to our maximum amount of 250,000. Click Add. The objective function, its total amount invested in the tech sector, has to be less than or equal to our right-hand side constraint. That's the maximum amount of 125,000. Click Add. Cell reference, that's our objective function, which is simply the total amount invested in the retail sector. That has to be greater than or equal to our minimum of 75,000. Click Add. Now we go down and get 
the objective function, the amount for target greater than or equal to our minimum amount of 15,000. Click Add. Cell reference, that's going to be our total amount invested in corporate bond index fund. That has to be greater than or equal to our calculated minimum amount. Click Add. We have no more constraints. I click Cancel. I see the objective function we're maximizing. We can look through this. And by the way, you can come back and change or delete as needed. We have all of our settings. I'm going to click Solve. And just like that, it found a solution. Remember, earlier video, we saw some of the error messages you can get, what causes it, and how to fix it. But we don't have an error message, so I'm going to click OK. And there it is. We're not investing anything in Microsoft. Oh, too bad. Excel is so awesome. We're investing 125000 in Apple, 15000 in Target, 85000 in Amazon, and 25000 in E-Trade Corporate Bond Fund. All right, so in this video, we saw our fourth example of linear programming. And we used Excel Solver to calculate the optimal amount, the maximum amount for portfolio returns. All right, we have one more video. In our next video, we will look at a finance example where we have a limited capital. And we'll look at a binary variable. All right, we'll see you next video.